Today on DC News Now, crash at the U.S. Capitol, the latest in the investigation on what led up to the incident. And weekend warm-up, meteorologist Damon Matson on the break in the weather. And stretching your dollar, how to make the most of holiday toy savings this season. Then remembering former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger. And fundamental human rights are the birthright of all. We look back at his life and legacy and extending the ceasefire between Israel and Hamas just ahead of the deadline. And thank you for joining us for the news at noon. I'm Mark Hall. We are following breaking news this afternoon. The Inspector General for the General Services Administration plans to announce a review of the decision to relocate the FBI headquarters to Maryland over Virginia. That source is con confirmed to DC News Now, and DC News Now's Leonard N. Fleming joins us live in the newsroom. Leonard, you were able to confirm this through your sources. What are they telling you? Good afternoon, Mark. Yes, they're telling me that basically the General Services Administration, the Inspector General for the General Services Administration, is going to conduct an examination, a probe, if you will, of that decision. And as you know, this was a controversial decision that Virginia did not like because they felt like the fix was in. They talked about in a letter to the Inspector General sent a few weeks ago, they talked about how uh, the former GSA official had connections to the property that was eventually chosen for the FBI to go to Greenbelt, Maryland. And uh, this is something that they've been calling for, uh, they, they, they've asked for, they want this probe because they feel like this decision was the wrong decision. Maryland officials, they were caught off guard by this. They had not heard this officially today, but they, uh, through sources, downplayed the fact that this probe will happen and said they still expect this decision to still be Maryland's and that they will win this over in the end. And I will have a, a conversation here in a little bit with uh, Virginia Senator Mark Warner to talk about uh, the decision uh, by the GSA, the Inspector General of the GSA, to order an examination of the decision to award Greenbelt, Maryland the FBI headquarters. Reporting in the newsroom, Leonard N. Fleming, DC News Now, back to you. All right, Leonard, thank you. New details this afternoon. A 28-year-old man has been arrested for reckless driving after crashing into a barrier outside the U.S. Capitol this morning. Capitol Police say the suspect, Kevin Simon, was driving at a high rate of speed when he got off Interstate 395 onto Washington Avenue in Southwest. They say Simon then hit two other cars and then kept driving crossed an intersection along D Street before turning left, hitting the barricade outside of the Capitol. Simon sustained minor injuries. He also faces resisting arrest and two counts of leaving the scene and colliding. And happening tonight, we are, this afternoon, we are kicking off the holiday season in D.C. with the National Christmas Tree Lighting. Lighting will take place on the ellipse at the White House and, Pre and President's Park. And if you remember the, the, earlier this week, it was toppled over by high wind. Well, don't worry, National Park Service was able to get the tree back up, and this year, it's hosted by Mickey Guyton. It was first was celebrated in 1923 by President Calvin Coolidge. DC News Now will have more coming up on DC News Now at four. And with the tree lighting, you can expect some road delays in the district to go into effect at 1 p.m. today and last until 7 this evening. The following areas will be closed to parking. 17th Street from Pennsylvania Avenue to Constitution Avenue Northwest, Constitution Avenue from 14th Street to 18th Street Northwest, and 15th Street F from at 15th Street from F Street to Constitution Avenue Northwest. And for a list of road closures, you can head to our website, dcnewsnow.com. Well, meteorologist Damon Madsen joins us now with the latest check on the forecast. Damon, I woke up this morning, much different reaction than when I woke up yesterday. And I know every day is a blessing, but the weather seems to be a little warmer today. It's on our side. That's <laughs> to say the least here, Mark, on this Thursday. For that Christmas tree lighting, yeah, the wind should not be a factor. And folks, as you go about the rest of your afternoon before that, we finally have warmer temperatures. Now, we had a mixed bag earlier this morning. Some of us woke up to more frigid conditions than others. Parts of northern Virginia still dropped down into the upper teens, but you had some warmer readings. Like D.C. with a low temperature of just 31 
degrees. Frederick and Winchester 28 again still chilly, but hey, it's a small improvement in the right direction there. And here we have our temperatures currently. What a change we are experiencing. It's already 50 degrees in DC. First time we've been in the 50s in several days and we even have warmer conditions in Leesburg, Waldorf. Now Hagerstown, Cumberland, a couple of spots are still in the 40s, but we should see temperatures continue to rise the rest of the afternoon here. All thanks to the southerly winds that continue to go at a decent enough clip that we can handle it. 8 to 12 mile per hour wind speeds is what we can expect for the rest of the day heading into the evening time. And on top of that, we have some sunshine helping us out mixed in with a few high clouds. So all is quiet here close to the district, but looking upstream a little bit here down across parts of the deep south, we have some rainfall. Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi. This is our next rainmaker that is going to track its way up into the district by the time we get into your Friday. So yes, even though we just got these warm temperatures, temperatures back. We're going to be dealing with some rainfall here very soon, but that's not until tomorrow. Here we have the rest of your afternoon going into the evening. Very comfortable with those temperatures in the low to mid 50s. And even as we go into the evening time, We'll only cool off gradually, dropping back into the 40s by the 7 o'clock hour. Not looking too bad at all, but again, that rainfall is on the way. When should we expect some soggy weather as we try to wrap up the week tomorrow? We'll have a full look at your forecast coming up here in just a bit. OK, Damon, thank you so very much. Officials in the district are are working to find the people who carjacked an FBI agent in Northeast DC. Police say that the, this happened near Lincoln Park on Capitol Hill just before 4 p.m. on Wednesday. Officials say that two armed suspects stole the vehicle. They also say that it was recovered and a half hour later, about a mile from where it was taken. Meanwhile, the DC Council discussed bills that would impact students in most DC schools. They say the two of those bills focus on getting students access to basic human service needs and extended education. DC News Now's Lex Juarez breaks down those bills. Well, these bills aim to tackle hunger and poverty head on for our students. One bill looks to offer free breakfast and lunch and after school snacks to all DC students at schools participating in the National School Lunch Program. With this bill, there will not be any extra eligibility requirements for students to get the food. The DC Food Policy Council estimates that this will cost about $8 million annually, but 86% of that cost is covered with funds the district already has. The other bill gets students access to money for college by requiring them to file a fast fast application in order to graduate. This requirement would start with the class of 2024. Students can opt out of the prerequisite, but will have to fill out a waiver from the Office of the State Superintendent of Education to do so. And council is expected to discuss and hear from folks in the community about these bills until about five o'clock this evening. In Washington, I'm Lex Juarez, DC News Now. Lex, thank you. Moving to Maryland, a study by the Washington County Community Action Council found that the amount of people experiencing homelessness in the county has increased. The study revealed homelessness has increased about 70% since July. The study also revealed that the cost of rent has increased in the county, resulting in more evictions and less funding for more affordable housing. There's not one way into homelessness or one way out, but some defi definite things is the lack of affordable housing, mental health, a dramatic increase in mental health. Something that we're working on together with our community partners is trying to get some outside the box solutions. A reach of Washington County says they have served 93 people within the last month. And a commuter alert US 340 near Harpers Ferry will reopen ahead of schedule. The project started on September 12th and officials say that it's reopening 10 days ahead of schedule. The work wasn't scheduled to end until December 11th. Almost 3,500 tons of rock was removed during the project, and some of those boulders the size of cars. Crews installed mesh barriers to catch rocks that may fall in the future. The project's chief engineer explains that's not all they did. Even better news for the public is we were able to do some extra work while the closure was there that won't inconvenience them later. So that when we reopen this, they'll really have a nice road there uh, for their commute. Well, that extra work included resealing the bridge over the Shenandoah River 
and tree clearing along the highway. The total cost for the project was more than $10 million. A DC leaders say that despite the district having one of the highest fast foot comp completion rates in the nation, very few of DC's 2022 graduating class applied for aid. Now one council member wants to make sure the next graduating class takes advantage of aid available to them. And testifying at the hearing happening in a few hours is Jessica Giles, executive director of the Education Reform Now DC. Our Tosin Fakile sat down with Giles this earlier this morning. I wanted to know, do you know how many or how often DC students fill out FAFSA applications? Quite a few students fill out uh, the FAFSA application, um, but we know that DC is experiencing a quiet, a quiet crisis in college access and completion. Only eight out of 100 ninth grade cohort students actually complete post-secondary education in DC yeah. within six years of graduation. And we know that uh, students who fill out FAFSA are much more likely to enroll in post-secondary education. Um, and so we need to do everything possible to make sure that students have what it takes. Uh, they have the supports and the tools to be able to have financial aid, which is a number one barrier to students enrolling in college. And you know, I, I, it's pretty obvious hearing from your response now, but what are your thoughts on this bill? So I believe that the bill is a great step. We also know that the opt-out provisions should be clear, and we know that students have to um, get support from college and career counselors to make sure that they have the information they need to fill out the FAFSA. So I believe that the bill is a good step along the way and that we just have to make sure that students have um, opportunities to be successful in college. Now it does give families the option to opt out. How do you think families will feel about this bill and the fact that they could opt out? I love that there is an opt-out provision. I think that's very important. Um, we're always talking to DC voters and parents who are voters. And over the last couple of months, we've been canvassing um, in Ward 7 and 8, talking to communities about college access and career. And what we've learned is that our communities are concerned about this and that um, 30 volunteers knocked on over 800 doors, had many conversations, and they want to see that there is uh, barriers broken for our <coughs> black and Latino youth and that we're doing everything possible to make sure that students have dual enrollment opportunities and the chance to make uh, a, a good wage in DC.